Hello everyone, so we are here with the TBM 930. Yes, you saw what you think you saw, the reflection of the moon in the field watch. So, today what we're going to do is something different, we are arriving at this place which is called Vigifora and we're going to land there doing an RNAV procedure which is something that has to be worked out yet with the flight simulator because it's not perfect. So let's get inside with the flight deck and get all ready. So we arrive at Juju Fodder maintaining 6,000, it's the beginning of the, the procedure, it's at 6,000, alright? So Juju Fodder is right here. Let's pretend I'm just getting some vectors to go there. So here I am go to my mode function display, select procedures and just to show you guys how it does. Okay, the airport is this one and the RNF is going to be this one and transition is this one, alright? So I'm going to load and activate, the procedure then is activated, from now we can go with nav and the aircraft is going to follow the whole procedure. So let me show you, yeah. So this procedure starts at uh, Juliet Foxtrot 006, but it's already had a magenta line that takes us all the way there. So we'll maintain 6000 until we got to Juliet Foxtrot 001. I was looking for a chart, but I didn't find to show you guys. So we're just going to concentrate on the performance of the aircraft during the approach, okay? Uh, the main problem I've been facing here is that, you see this diamond? It never should show this low because the procedure starts at 6000 anyway. So if you come here in the, in the MFD and you go to flight plan, you're going to see all the points and the altitude we're supposed to cross them. The, air, the airport is at 3,000 feet and we start procedure at 6,000 feet, so 3,000 above the airport. At 4,600, which is roughly 1,500 feet over the airport, we are supposed to be here at Juliet Fox Juliet Foxtrot 004. I'm gonna try to use the approach mode because that's what looks to work. I haven't looked at the manual, so I'm still working with this TBM. I've never flown a TBM before. Actually, I never flown a uh, turbo prop before. I just flew jets and pistons. But I'm getting the hand of it. The only thing is that I didn't see in the manual is still how do you know how to approach the modes. And I'm just gonna, I'm just kind of uh, doing it using a Boeing. Uh, background approach to it. All right. So the city is here. Juju Fort is one of the main cities in the south uh, south part of the state of Minas Gerais, which is a very important state in Brazil. And you see, we have some clouds here, so it would be kind of tricky to do a visual approach, anyways. And the airport's here, runway 21, runway 03. We will come from that side. So stay tuned. It's a beautiful evening here in Minas Gerais, Brazil. The sun is about to set and we are about to land, or so I think. Let's get back inside. We are about to start to turn into the procedure. All right. So this is going to be our initial approach fix. This is going to be our intermediate approach fix, and this is going to be our final approach fix. As I told you guys, I didn't find a chart. So usually our navs they have something around 400, 500 feet of uh, of minimums. 
I set them here in the PFT, but I, I honestly I never saw them in the PFT itself. I'm not sure if they are there, anyways. But uh, yeah, I've set here 4,000. I'll put 3,500 better. So this would be something like 500 feet over the runway. I believe this is going to be enough for us to see the runway. And just keep it the heading with it, just like in the Boeing aircraft. And what else? The aircraft is following the FMS, which is correct, because we're doing an air nav. It's retrieved from the database. It's using GPS data to stay in the profile. And yeah, the only weird thing is this this diamond here. The wind are the winds are calm there in uh in Fora. And we are just about to start the approach. So I'm still keeping the speed quite high because we are still far. I'm doing a bit of cloud surfing here. Uh, because I love cloud surfing. Now we're starting our turn. Okay, let's get back to the job, right? So now we're starting to our, our turn to the left. As you can see, the legs well depicted here. We're pretty much following it. So now it's turning to where? To here or something. Speeds already depicted. Let me just check. So, PFD, speed bugs. Uh, no, I got it. Good. Now I have my VPP approach of 85 knots is depicted. My intention is to approach around 90. So we have a bit of buffer. And And that, that's because I'm still getting used to, uh, to the turboprop engine, which takes longer to react than a jet or a piston. So here is when you see, here is when the, the IFR shine, right? Because how would we find the airport this way? We couldn't. So what we're doing, we are using this RNF to guide ourselves into it. So now I'm starting to get my power back because we are getting into the initial approach fix and I don't want to get there too quick too fast. I don't want to have to lose all that speed during the descent part of the approach. I'm just going to arm the approach from now on and hopefully it will catch. Let's see if it's going to cycle the uh, Juliet Foxtrot 006, Juliet Fox 001. I think this will work pretty much like an IAN, Integrated Approach Navigation 787. 
apparently that's what it does. So we have already, you know, Vinev out here and a glide path armed. The lateral guidance comes from the FMS. That looks correct. I'm just waiting for this to cycle. Alright, it cycled. It looks alright from here. The only tricky, st the only tr tricky thing here is this uh, this vertical profile here. It shows like glide path is armed. Vinev out, but I mean the diamonds down there, and I wouldn't go 4,600 because, like I told you guys, this should be acquired only around Jolly Juliet Foxtrot 004, which is pretty much the glide path. So. I'm gonna wait until we get closer. As you can see from the runway, we have 10 miles between 001 and the runway. 10 miles here. So this 10 miles makes sense to count for 3,000 feet. So yeah, 6,000. That's pretty much where we should be. 3,000 plus 3,000 because the fuel elevation of the Juju Forda is 3,000 feet. I can't see the sun from here. The TBM is not that great to see things outside. Okay, but we have this camera and we can check it out. It's a beautiful, beautiful concept we're doing here. Really something. What a view. Alright, so now activated the final approach course. It's intercepting it. Just gonna put the heading here so it matches. And this is the weird part because here is when I suppose this thing would go down, but it didn't. So what do I do? My next altitude I can send all the way to 4600, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. 4600 is set here. The aircraft is not descending, right? So I'm just gonna go vertical speed and start descending this thing. The VNAV is not going, is it? No, I mean, I've just hopped. So I'm putting 900 feet per minute. I'm gonna reduce the power now because we are definitely getting fast and gear down to help to the aircraft to slow down. We are below 178 knots, so we can do it. And also we can put the notch on flaps. Let me keep the let me give it a little bit more rate so we can try to meet this 4600 in time. We're 
barely can see the running there, but there's some sign of it. You see now the diamond's moving toward our point, which is great. Now we will pass this for sure at 4,600. And acquired. Blood pad looks above us. Full flaps. I see the running already. Just waiting for it to capture the glide pad. I really wanted to do it. Yes, it acquired the glide pad. So now I just work with the power to keep it on the value I want it to be. We can set the missed approach here. And from now on, it's pretty much just following the protocol we already visual with the runway thanks to this uh, amazing RNF but honestly this last part is weird all right it should have come from 6,000 to 4,600 on its own it didn't so what we did we applied this uh, kind of uh, capture the glide path from above technique and we got it but it was not that pretty right the right way of doing it was, was was to do a continuous descent. I, I was kind of behind the aircraft for a while. So now if we are okay, we can pretty much disconnect from 3,500. I told you guys that it's the minimums. Uh, and I'm gonna wait to see if it says something about the minimums, if it shows somewhere in the, uh, in the PFD, because so far I didn't see. And as you can see, there's a lot of turbulence here too. But now we have a proper RNAV, LNAV, NAV thing, you know. We have this FMS showing that we are in the lateral guidance correctly, and this glide path showing we are in the vertical guidance correctly. But the weirdest, weirdest thing was to go from the intermediate fix to the final approach fix by myself. Usually you would go down uh, already from the platform, which was 6,000, with the... Uh, with the autopilot, I mean, in this glide path mode or whatever, a VNAV, and here we used the approach, so it was just like an IAN. So it worked, 3,500 feet, I told you guys was the minimum, so we were supposed to see the runner here, we are, we are already seeing it, so autopilot's coming off, and we are ready to land. Of course, we could have done this totally manually but you see the workload will be much much higher especially because the approach stopped doing until that final approach fix what we expected it to do it looks like we have a bit of t uh, crosswind from the right here here just for you to see how it is how it sounds it sounds nice so welcome to Juju Fora I hope you guys have enjoyed our short trip here to, to try the RNF and uh, yeah it's a pretty interesting procedure it's very useful uh, even though the minimums are not that low but if you have an overcast sky like we kind of had 
then it makes total sense. Alright, so very good day for you guys. Hope you have enjoyed and see you around next time.